I feel like a politician uh, as I walk up and I take this mask off so I can speak clearly. Uh, it, uh, I feel like so many of them, but you do notice that I don't have anyone else close to me. So with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and do this. First of all, welcome. We're delighted you're here today. It is literally a situation to where this has been a long time coming, and it really, really supports a very important need for our students and so many members of our community. Today we're opening and celebrating the food pantry, which is a new addition to what we do because so many students face economic hardships, including hunger. Uh, those of us that are blessed in so many ways, we don't see that day in and day out, but many of our students do. And so it's one of those things that we're delighted to provide additional assistance to them. And as you tour the facility today, uh, you'll have an opportunity to see that uh, we also have a clothes closet that was created a number of years ago by some uh, visionary faculty members and others that have wanted to do this in time. And so the food pan pantry is in addition to that. So we uh, just really are delighted to be here with each of you today to celebrate this day. Many students have a wide variety of difficulties that they face uh, just uh, pursuing their dreams and pursuing the educations that they seek. The pandemic has only made things worse. It is uh, literally one of those things that our children and grandchildren and their grandchildren will someday write about this and say, I remember when. And the courage and the uh, dedication that the people that have helped navigate and have navigated this situation uh, are to really be commended for the things that they've done together. Students come to FTCC to feed their minds so they can learn and grow and prepare themselves and their families for brighter tomorrows. And with this pantry, we can help them feed their bodies as well. Again, it's clear you look at me, I'm, I don't go without eating too many meals, but the truth is there are many people who do. And the thing that breaks my heart is when you have families and people struggling to take advantage of the opportunities that we collectively have provided, and then they can't feed themselves or perhaps their families. And so that's why we're proud to do our part in helping them navigate that process more effectively. So initially, the pantry will be open on Tuesdays and Thursdays initially. We're dependent on contributions and collabor collaboration by a wide variety of people. And so we're gonna stock this pantry with non-perishable food and personal care items. We'll have supermarket gift cards uh, that may be issued for perishable foods. It just depends on how this continues to grow. And I will tell you that my wife included, uh, it's been exciting to watch the things grow in terms of the contribution and the care the people of our community have demonstrated already, and I'm sure more will come in the future. All items have been generously donated by local supermarkets, local business groups, and civic groups, individual citizens as well, and not least of all, our FTCC employees. And we thank each of you for the generosity and the compassion that you've shown others as we continue to go into this Thanksgiving season. As we look into this season of giving and this season of thanking uh, those that have provided us so much, uh, it is gratifying to know that others are out there and they're also looking at what they can give so this is an exciting time for us to be here. The pantry is actually an extension of the college's efforts to help student, students that have been hurt by COVID-19. During the pandemic, the college has provided hundreds of thousands of dollars to aid uh, students to the Federal CARES Act funds that have been contributed to us. And those, those funds were sorely needed by many of our students just to make it through the difficult times that we've experienced thus far. The FCTC, the FTCC Foundation has also provided tens of thousands of dollars and other aid to help students who were in need. And what is so enlightening about that is that, again, we think that all these needs are taken care of, but when it's a matter of whether you're gonna be able to leave your lights on or to experience heat in the colder uh, days of winter, uh, that's one of the things that they were addressing as well as these other sources that we know. And again, people step forward, people of the community, certainly people uh, at FTCC uh, who uh, step forward without any acknowledgement, any real uh, you know, publication or anything like that. They just need, did what was needed. And that's a real commendation in my estimation to everyone who was involved. 
We have not beaten hunger, unfortunately. Last year before the pandemic, nearly 11% of all U.S. households experienced food insecurity. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, this year nearly one in every four households is estimated to have experienced food insecurity. Now, I struggled for a while with what food insecurity meant. It means hunger. And so many of us don't go to bed at night or go into the evening uh, with real hunger pangs. There are many and way too many people in our communities who do. And so the truth is, this is our small effort to do what we can to help alleviate some of those circumstances. So as a result, the pantry will need donations on an ongoing basis, and these donations qualify for tax deductibility. So just like with our closed closet, uh, come in, make your contribution, get your forms, we will find a way of making it happen so that we can all celebrate and helping these people, but at the same time, it may give you an opportunity to get a bit of a tax uh, opportunity as well. So if you are inclined to give, we appreciate your help. Our students will appreciate it, and I think it's just another of the many, many ways that people in Cumberland County and in Fayetteville demonstrate their care for other people and our ongoing collective effort to help other people accomplish what they have sought to accomplish. You see, we had the largest graduation that we've had in our history this past spring in the midst of a time when we thought everybody else, we would all drop down dramatically. Uh, we've had the largest, we had the largest uh, graduation that we've ever had. And so it's a tribute to not only the students, but to the faculty, the staff, and the community that pulled together their expertise and their efforts to make this happen. Now, there are a lot of people, and I sure as the world forget somebody, that uh, you know have helped bring this together. So. I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Sandy Ammons up here to help me uh, cut the ribbon and others. Just come on up. Uh, everyone who, uh, Marlene, I think you, and Mark, you've had an opportunity. In, and I'm going to ask somebody, Joe, come on over. Joe's the one that we always look to to find us a place to, to do these things. And I'm going to ask the uh, closed closet lady herself, Daisy, if you'd come up and join us as well. Am I missing anyone? Once again, give a round of applause to these people for doing such a remarkable job in putting this together. So once again, thank you. Uh, we appreciate all that you are all doing and have done. And what all is left to be done as we go into the future and as we continue to provide assistance to those in need in our community, and sometimes those are the very people that we're standing next to that we'd never have a clue that were hungry or needed anything for their families. The truth of the matter is we're all in this thing together and it's a grateful uh, president here that is sitting here today and watching this gathering of people celebrate and do what we can to help people in the future. So once again, thank you for being here. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, and I really look forward to serving the needs of the students as we go into the future.